when the red lights go off, we go racing in round one of the 2011 Pirelli World Challenge Championships about to unfold. Watch for the lights. They're on. Rev's coming up. Field is clear. We're green. Look at Randy oh. Bowles on the outside of row two. That all-wheel drive Volvo gets the launch. He absolutely nailed it. You would expect nothing less. And then, nice piece of defensive driving in there to make sure Patton didn't get back and through. Everyone trying to funnel down through that very tight turn one area. This is where problems can happen. Three different classes, 49 cars taking the green light there today. Two, three, four, abreast in some spots and long already. Taking a look at Randy Popes, not able to get the job done up into turn four, and this is that part of the track that Johnny referred to as incredibly busy in the cockpit. It's really tight, and right now what the drivers are doing is just trying to generate some tire pressure, get some tire temps so they don't make a mistake. Remember, this is a long championship season. You want to get off to a strong start. You don't want to throw it away here in the early laps. And of course, with the speed differential between the GT cars, the GTS cars, and the touring cars, it's going to be interesting, as I think they're going to be catching traffic mighty quick here. Very, very tricky corner here. That's down into turn 10, and I'm impressed, Cal. Everybody has gone through this opening lap so far clean. This huge field doing the job. Very good start. You can see there Pat Long having a look at Randy down at the inside of turn 10. Thought better off it, but Pat really seems to be able to eat up those curbs with that Porsche. They've got a good setup, it looks like, with the suspension settings for this street circuit. And we talked a little bit about the surprise of Pat Long. It was just earlier this week that True Speed, oh, and Ziegler in the Mitsubishi Evo, a big problem, got it crossed up. Let's see if we can see what happened. Oh, Crosland gets to the inside of him, just turfs him into the fence, Greg. Pretty aggressive move. And interestingly, both of those gents started in pit lane after some problems on the formation lap. Well, sometimes that aggressiveness will certainly pay off, but you have to be careful. Look at O'Connell now in the caddy. He's starting to get into a rhythm here. That beautiful silver machine, P6, getting hounded a little bit right now. That's Rob Morgan right behind him in his Porsche. And Crescentini in front in the StopTech centric parts Porsche just going out of view. Good battle here for this sixth spot. Morgan obviously a teammate to Pat Long. They're going to be running with the true speed colors this year, but problems there for one of the Nissans. Tony Rivera, that left front corner is damaged. It almost, it must have made some contact perhaps. Well, it doesn't look like there's damage to the body work, so let's see if we can suss this one out, Cal, on board. On board with him. This is turn nine. Oh, oh, clips the inside apex, and that launches him into the outside wall. So easy to happen here on this street circuit at St. Pete. Pat Long pretty much relentless in his uh, hounding. Oh, Long really swinging the back out. Got some great rotation. Yeah, he really started to uh, put the pressure on Randy Pope's there, but some Ooh. problems there. Oh, Herbert there. I believe that's our pole sitter in the touring car class. Tristan Herbert. Lips the outside wall. We're now on board with Aschenbach coming through that fast kink. Sitting in that third spot right now. And Chip Her and Herbert. Boy, look at that, man. That's, that's, that's Herbert's lead. wheel just came off, didn't it? That's the left front wheel of Herbert, obviously, from that, that contact, Cal. Take another look at it. Chip Her down to the inside. But there you see the problem. That's why Tristan was slow through that corner. Chip takes the lead, and Aschenbach is right there with him. Great piece of evasive to get around that tire. As we hop on board now in the office with Randy Popes, and this is that battle for the wow. lead. Oh, what a move around the outside in the kink. That you is can't very do stuff. that here. That is really wild coming down through that corner. Fifth gear for these boys. And Pat Long makes the move. Our pull sitter now out front. Now, let's go back to the GTS category. On board with the leader, that's Paul Brown. If that name sounds familiar, he's been racing Mustangs of some sort in World Challenge for a lot of years. He's renowned for his car control, and he's certainly going to be leaning heavily on those skills around this very tight street circuit here today. And that's Brett Sandberg has gone into the wall, and that's a blind corner. Everybody doing a nice job feeding their way through this point. So, oh, ooh, he's getting out of the, the car. Oh, that was Eric Meyer, and oh. that's Shea Holbrook getting into him, and Sandberg sitting on the, boy, he's waving. That That's, is potentially disastrous cow. there. You've got to stay in the seat. You've got to keep those seat belts on until the corner workers get to you. That is not the move that the driver should make in this type of situation. you got to think maybe he smelled some smoke or something. This is on board with Eric Meyer. Watch this. Coming through turn nine. Nowhere to go. Speed of the car just dictated he needed all of the road to get there. And there you see the number 28 into the wall. 
Another look at it from that same camera. There's Brett getting out. Here comes Meyer. Oh, I just hope he wasn't injured there, Greg. That is two big hits, and here comes another car. This is with Shea Holbrook, and she's third in. Watch here. There's nothing you can do. You just don't have the grip to change direction that quickly. So no fault on the three cars that were involved there after the initial incident. But from a driver's perspective, you've got to stay in the car. You've got to stay in the seat. Keep those seat belts tight until you get released. Oh, no. And a problem for the 06, that's the 15-year-old Alec Udell. It's a completely separate incident. We'll check in on that. But right now, let's check in with Sandberg's crew. I know we were in P2 at the point, And next thing we know, it, we... Uh Saw on the big screen that it looked like our car wasn't running anymore. The driver was out of the car before we got in contact with him, probably for safety reasons. So we're waiting to hear just like you guys. Boy, a concern Morgan Sturgis there. That's Holbrook. That's Sandberg. And you can see limping he's a limping bit. a little bit. But boy, as bad as that could have been, that's good news to see. And also you can see Shea Holbrook was getting out of the car. Obviously, we are under a full course caution at this point. Going to take some time to clean things up. Brett Sandberg is in pit lane. You know what, I just got caught a little bit on the inside. Just clipped that inside wall, pushed me straight out into the other wall. There wasn't, wasn't really much I could do about it. And more good news, there is Shea Holbrook, obviously okay, heading down to the pit lane. And Eric Meyer, too, has made his way back into the pits. We were able to catch up with him. We had a, uh, we had a late yellow flag coming in. Uh, I, think it was, uh, I think it was turn 11, and there was no place to go. And luckily, uh, Brett Sandberg, I, I hit the back of his car and he had uh, was getting out of his car, and I immediately thought, I just I just killed my buddy. You know, I sawed him in half. And about that time, Shay didn't have any place to go, and she rear-ended us hard, thinking that we'd pit uh, pinned uh, Brett a little bit more. Um, kept looking at Brett. He's like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then we got out of there. Uh, I think our car's done for the weekend. Hopefully, we'll get it back together and make Long Beach. Pat Long now has a new challenge in terms of Mike Skeen. That Corvette has looked very strong here all weekend long. He knows how to win. He did it on debut last season at Mid-Ohio. And Pat's bringing him down really slowly there. Really, they've got to maintain the speed of the pace car. This is a very slow restart here for Pat Long. Let's see how the field reacts to it. They're starting to bunch up. Pat's going to try and get the launch here as we start lap 19. Now, you'd think the guy he's trying to hurt may be the Volvo with that big turbo in it and all that lag, because you know that vet's going to go in a hurry. And look at Crescentini moves way to the right. The caddy tucks in behind him. Gaples wanted to go as well, but he got blunted by the Nissan. And Crescentini thinking about it, Cal. No, not going to get by Skeen. Look at Pope. Oh, Pope's got freight train. He got swallowed there. You'd have to think maybe that was that turbo again on the Volvo. He was waiting for Pat Long to go. Got caught up in that situation, and he has lost a bundle of positions there. And Long quickly opens up a couple three car length gap. Crescentini in that red, white, and black Porsche. And look at O'Connell all over the back of Sophronis in that silver caddy. Steve, I think they're getting a little bit loose down into turn four in that Nissan. And we get back to the GTS category. This is Paul Brown. And look at Jason Von Klug. Oh, that orange Mustang just deep down the inside. He must have timed that restart perfectly. That was a great move, but a pretty hairy one too. You're really taking some chances there. Remember the tires aren't back up to snuff just yet. Takes a little bit of a while to get them cleaned off, get the pressures back because we have a very lengthy yellow we are under there. Right now we've got the Mustangs running one, two, three as PD Cunningham now tries to respond, tries to get that Acura back towards the front of the pack. He's down the inside looking for that third position, heading down into turn one. Yeah, those two lead Mustangs are the new Boss 302S looking impressive on their debut. Here's awesome Lawson Aschenbach. Great to have him back in the series. He's in the lead, and by virtue of a mechanical problem for Chip Hurd, that contact we saw a little bit earlier in the show with Tristan Herbert actually cut Chip's tire. It was just a slow deflation, and so that's how he was able to sneak through. Meanwhile, Pat Long out front, and uh, Mike Skeen sits in second. He got into second right before that caution fell. And let's take a look at our three class leaders in GT. It's Patrick Long in the Porsche, Jason Von Klug in the Mustang in GTS, and in Turing, Lawson Aschenbach. Closing in on the time limit here at the Acura Sports Car Challenge of St. Petersburg, presented by Pirelli. Pat Long continues to lead through that long caution. We are up against the time limit. So Pat right now is in absolute full race mode, trying to prevent Skeen and Crescentini, the two cars behind, from running him down. What a move by Crescentini on that restart. Oh. He came from deep in the pack all the way up to third. He's won here before. He knows how to get the job done, but I think the gap between he and the two leaders 
may be a bit too much right now with no traffic immediately ahead as the laps dwindle down. Meanwhile, up front still, Pat Long leading in GT and in the overall category over that Prager Wheels Corvette of skiing. Long in that uh, Privacy Star Entrust Porsche. You know, he's, as we've talked about, he's the only US-born Porsche factory driver, and it was a huge coup by the True Speed team to be able to sign him. And he's got one previous start in World Challenge, but he's raced here on the streets of St. Pete many times in the American Le Mans series. Well, look at this battle in GTS. Von Klug still has the lead from Brown, but it is very intense here. That was a great move that he made down at turn one. There you see Brown all over the curb there, coming through turn 10 but there's still some smoke coming out of the back end of that Mustang. Boy, and Petey Cunningham is giving Eric Foss huge headaches in that battle for third behind. And Paul Brown, by the way, I talked about he's driven World uh, Challenge with Mustangs. Oh, Von Kluge got a little sideways. Looked like he may have lost it. And traffic. Long, huge traffic. And Skeen able to go through, but I don't think he was able to get the advantage. Well, Pat, oh! oh! Spin there by Felt. Long nip through, but look at Skeen. He's got damage. Crescentini's by, as is Sophronis. Oh, big damage to that left front corner from Mike Skeen. And it uh, looks like Felt just lost it on board with Felt. Watch here. Turn eight just gets in a little too deep, loses the rear end, and bang. The leader goes through, and Skeen's day is over. Oh, man, and he was having a good look at a potential run for the lead. And because of that, Crescentini is up in his second, but team owner for Crescentini <laughs> is James Sofronis in that Global Motorsports car all over the back. But now Pat Long has himself a large breathing gap here. Last time out of turn 14, rolls the throttle onto that beautiful Porsche, and Pat Long returns to World Challenge and promptly wins. Crescentini's gonna do it in second, and the crew absolutely ecstatic for True Speed. Well, they got themselves a gun, and he certainly fired a great bullet here in this opening round. Unbelievable, Porsche one, two, three. The Corvette was looking so strong, post was a factor, but a great day for the German mark. Absolutely, now in that GTS category, Von Klug able to hang on in that orange Mustang, the Varsity Ford of Ann Arbor machine, and he brings it home with a win. Just a great performance by him as well. What a restart, and boy, he put it together when he needed it. He did, and Petey Cunningham looks like he hung on for a podium there, so he had a strong run there in the last lap or two. And welcoming Lawson Ossenbach back into World Challenge, the GT champion in 2006. Wins in touring car. What a great run for him. Cal, I'm going to leave it for you. I'm going to head down to the pits for some interviews. Okay, mate. Sounds good. What a great day for the Compass 360 boys. Lawson Aschenbach, the 2006 GT champion, gets a great start on his 2011 campaign.